This call is now being recorded. Okay, so good day class. For today, we are going to discuss the pricing models and decisions. Um, decisions made in revenue management will vary in many models, researches, analyzation, and in order to conduct those researches and analyzation, we have to understand the customer or the consumer. So, um, as we have discussed previously, uh, it is the customer or consumer is the heart of the revenue management. So, for today's objectives, we are going to understand the motivation of the customer in making purchase decisions. Second, understand the influence of the economic cycle in consumers' purchase decisions. And third, understand the principles of market segmentation for a hotel. And lastly, understand the core components of pricing and its impact on value perception. Now, let us understand the consumer. So with globalization, increased mass communication and the instant transmission of ideas, societies, and the people within them are influenced by a tremendous range of cultural, social, and different behaviors from across the world. So for marketers, the traditional approach to understanding people or the consumer has been differentiated in a, in a number of ways. So first, they are differentiated by the age, differentiated by uh, gender, differentiated by race, differentiated by nationality, by education, by occupation, by marital status, and lastly, by living arrangements. So these are the usual ways the consumer is being differentiated. And this now needs to be enhanced by common understanding of how one differentiate people by their interest by their activities by their opinions by their preferences and by their values differ in the food they eat um, they differ in their political beliefs and what they might choose to wear and what they might choose to read so in predicting the needs and want of people or the consumer uh, it is the business or of marketers or the social researchers who will now need to focus on these smaller groups of individuals with similar buying behaviors, okay, rather than focusing on the mass markets of the previous decades. Okay, so um, direct marketing and social, me uh, social marketing using the social media are merely some of the distribution channel in which uh, it is widely used in the market so that uh, widely used in the market so that they can identify uh, the specific uh, consumer behavior. Okay, so understanding the consumer and the potential buying behavior given certain sets of circumstances has become increasingly difficult yet increasingly important, especially in providing targets for specific type of promotions and offers to desired a market segment. So if RM is going to work effectively, so the understanding of what condition and behaviors will influence individual purchase decisions become more important than trying to provide a global solution. Okay, so consumer can be both individual. Consumer can be a personal consumer and can be an organizational consumer. So the personal consumer makes purchase decision on the basis of their own requirement, needs, and used while organization consumer makes purchase decision for products and equipment and services for the benefit of the organization so in rm terms both are equally important in the pursuit of maximizing revenue but have to be approached in very different ways okay so lahi lahi ang ilahang approach since um it involves man sila og mga different ways okay so Understanding the corporate market is equally important in under, important to understanding individual um, consumer. So in terms of consumer's perception and expectation, um, as what I have said, um, consumers can be both organization and individual. Both have perceptions and value to the quality of the particular product or services. So based on their own view of the product and services, 
um, they have their uh, different per perception whether they are going to use the product or not. Okay, so this perception may be based on real world experience okay, using the product or service or equally based on stimuli derived from a broad range of messages from individuals um, advertising or third party opinions such as could be found in any um, comparison with website. Okay, so um, advertising is one of the marketing uh, technique used by the business people so that even if um, especially in introducing new product because it can uh, derive stimuli to the a consumer. So even if wala pa sila nakagamit na nga product, wala pa sila personal experience na nga certain na product, but still na ay, na ay urge sa ilang self na they want to purchase that product because na dag ni sila sa advertisement or because nakadurog na sila og mga positive reviews from the other people. Okay, so the consumer's perception of the product or services includes within its frame of reference the price, cost, and the perceived quality. Okay, so um, perception and expectation put sa cons consumer sa product mag include put na siya sa uh, frame sa product o sa iha put nga quality. And then perceived value, therefore, is based on cost, which could include non-monetary cost combined with the perceived quality. So the interpretation put on the vast range of visual and other stimuli that conditions their perception of particular product and services. Um, um, perception is not always based on objective evidence, but on the iman imaginary that is used to try and position products and services. So the quality and price relationship sets up for the consumer expectations as to the value of the product and services. So if the cost in relation to the perceived quality are seen to be outside an acceptable range, then the product or services will be rejected. So in RM, Understanding the price points in relation to the perceived particularly relevant when making pricing decisions in rapidly changing demand situations. So if that product or services does not meet those expectations, uh, the consumer becomes dissatisfied. And that dissatisfaction will significantly influence future uh, behavioral purchase decisions. And if that dissatisfaction is widely broadcast through a range of different media, then this can have a particular impact on other people's perception and expectation of the product and services. So it is very important that business people or those uh, those a product and services introduced by the business people um, should really meet the consumer's expectations and perceptions. Uh, because if it does not meet, then possible possible thing would happen is that maghatag din siya negative impact. And dili lang siya mohatag negative impact to the people who purchase that product, but also it can affect to the other uh, consumers since those, since that person will provide negative feedback naman. Okay? Okay, so after understanding the consumer, what are the perception expectation, we are now going to understand the value. So understanding value, or more importantly, the consumer's perception of value is integral to revenue management. So in a buyer or select seller transaction, the value is the amount of perceived benefit gained minus the price paid so this is the formula so perceived benefit minus the price kumpila ang price and then mo na siya ang value okay so if price points for a product or services are set lower than consumer expectations then the consumer tend to be prepared to take more risk Okay, kay lower man ang iyahang koan, a consumer expectation. And because um, the value would be greater as the price is lower when measured against the perceived benefit. But if price point is higher against the perceived benefit, 
consumers tend to be more risk adverse and will be seeking more value so the issue of revenue management is establishing the appropriate balance across the range of price points that are offered okay Oh, so here for the bonus question for those people who are really watching the pre-recorded video so this would be your chance to well know kung unsa gid ang answer ani niya okay so these bonus questions will be included in the module exam and in the final exam so why it is important to understand the consumer by beyond the traditional factors such as age gender and etc so first so A, consumer have more freedom of choice than in the past. B, consumers refuse to be pigeonholed. C, increase goods and services on the market. D, all of the above. So the answer for this is D, all of the above. Okay. Okay, now let's proceed to the economy and supply demand. So the economy, okay, so it it is a state of the economy that influences the confidence of consumers in making purchase decision. It could be argued that revenue management is even more important when competition is increased and the economic conditions show no little, show little or no growth. So the importance of maximizing revenue management under the circumstances is reduced. Okay, reduced and the demand is obvious. So therefore, the pricing policy implemented and the speed at which organizations respond to changes in demand determine their competitiveness. Okay, so for condition and for conditions to growth, the confidence is increased, which in turn increase the propensity to spend. If the conditions of recession or stagnation, confidence is reduced. Okay, so savings increase and then demand falls and spending is reduced. So under this condition, competition increased and for the consumer perceived value is fundamental to the purchase decision. Okay, so wider economic conditions. Okay, so um, external scanning is the careful monitoring of an organization's internal and external environment for detecting early signs may influence the current future plans okay so external factors have a significant impact on the consumer's propensity to purchase so these are often categorized using the um acronym PESEL, which considers the following factor so p for political uh, political issues and trends like fiscal policies, legislative change. E for economic. Okay, so economic issues and trends like economic change, um, those inflation inflation rate. S for social. So social issues and trend like uh, increased appreciation of the culture and great, greater community pride. So mo na siya. Okay, especially if first-hand experience na ni mga mga butang. And then, T for technological. So, technological issues and trends like um, development in technology, uh, mga electronic services, and booking online and others. L for legal. So, legal issues and trends like business permits, uh, business permits, or mga permits from the different government agencies. And lastly, E for environmental okay so environmental issues and trends like go green or no plastic policies so mana siya kailangan studyhan in a business so that um you will be able to know uh what are the approaches in the external and in internal environment okay so the role of cost in pricing so in order to be profitable, a seller must sell a product or service for more than the cost of providing the product or service. So business cost can be classified in a range of ways with the following being the most important. So this approach forms the basis of the traditional profit and loss account. So the basic cost element approach represents a simple way of classifying cost using the resources required to produce the product or services.
So there are three cost of element. First, material. So material represents the cost of the components that make up the product. Okay, labor includes um, cost associated with rewarding personnel for their efforts and expenses, which include all other arising costs. The second approach is to divide costs into those which can be assigned to product, services, departments, or particular activities, and those which cannot be assigned as indirect overhead uh, costs. Okay, so an example of direct cost include materials, our labors, and expenses. Example of indirect cost, these are the site rental, general manager salaries, and energy costs. So all these costs could be directly attributed to the restaurant. It is tempting to try to allocate indirect costs to product and services. However, um, this is often problematic as it is usually difficult to arrive at a basis of upper up apportionment, which is truly re representative of how the cost has been accumulated. So the third category is illustrates how the cost behaves under differing conditions to volume or activity. So the two extremes are variable cost and fixed cost, but many costs contain an element of both. So first, fixed cost. These are costs that remain unaffected by the level of activity. So whether open or closed, a business still has to bear fixed costs. Best example for this one are those rent. Okay, so rent is payable regardless of how busy the business might be. Other example of fixed cost could be loan interest and management salaries. So it can be said that fi fixed costs will never change, but fixed costs will change if there is a price increase, example, um, rent charge, charges may go up by each year in line with inflation or indeed by a higher rate. Okay, so the main point here is for you to realize that fixed costs are costs that do not alter as a result of changes in the activity of the business. Although fixed costs uh, remain constant, um, in total, the cost per unit of activity decreases as volume increases. Second is variable cost. So this change in proportion to the level of activity of the business. So the most obvious example is for cost in the case of restaurant. Okay, if the number of if the number of covers increase by 50%, then food cost will increase in direct proportion. This means that we have to assume that the cost per, per portion remain constant and each additional cover serve will create a linear increase in the cost of sales. Of course, it is possible that the cost per portion may fall with increase in volume to take account of. Okay, so for example, uh, this kind of mga book buying discounts. Wanna show you best example, Annie. And then, last, uh, semi variable cost contain an element both fixed and variable cost. So, example is the energy cost. Okay. Um, for example, so it's likely to contain a fixed rental charge and remainder of the cost is the dependent on consumption. So example of semi-variable cost is the energy cost. Okay, um, here is the graph showing the cost for the semi-variable cost and then the volume of sales. So in order to be able to predict how cost will change with revenue or, act or activity, it is essential to be able to determine which costs are fixed, variable, and semi-variable, and a linear relationship is assumed. However, in practice, it can be expected that variable cost okay, uh, per unit drop as volume increase due to increased discounts of for bulk purchases and economics of scale. So graphically shown, so as we have um, discussed in the previous slide, fixed costs remain constant even if there is a change in this, if, even if there is an in, increase in the cost of semi-variable cost and the variable. So still fixed costs remain constant, okay? So another graph 
being shown. So the and here we have identified the brick even point. So the identification of brick even point is critical in understanding pricing as business need to ensure that the selling price exceeds the cost of providing the product or services. So the brick even point is when the business revenue equals to the total cost exactly. Okay. So mauna siya. So these are the definition of direct cost, indirect cost, fixed cost, uh, variable cost, um, semi-variable cost, and contribution. Okay, so now let us proceed to the supply and demand. Okay. Supply indicates how much the supplies in the marketplace can offer, while demand refers to how much for product or services is desired by the buyers. And then the correlation between price and how much of a good or services is supplied to the market is known as the supply relationship. So an accurate measurement of demand for products in the hospitality industry requires consideration of the three uh, factors. These factors is the desire to purchase, the, the ability of the consumer to pay, and then the willingness of the consumer to pay. Okay, so um, equilibrium price is the point at which the amount of a product supplied and the amount of demand for the products are in balance. So for food service operator, the business has some ability to um, increase or decrease supply in order to adapt the demand. So supply in a set down restaurant is calculated by multiplying the number of seats in the restaurant by the hours of seat availability. For example, um, in a cafe with um, Nashe 20 seats, which is open for 12 hours per day. And then it has a total of available seat supply of 240 seat hours. So the manager can increase or decrease the number of hours that the restaurant is open to satisfy demand. However, it is important to note here that just because the cafe adjusts its hours to try and cater for increased demand, they may not necessarily be the same demand at those times. Okay? Uh, late at night. So, wala namang gid kaayoy mo, mo consume or wala namang gid kaayoy mo kuan og mga cafe if late na kayo ang night. Okay? So, furthermore, Revenues will not increase just by extending supply capacity, but only if customer will spend money for it. Okay. So, so we have here um, types of demand. So revenue management relies on the condition that the price that buyers are willing to pay for a product is subjective and constantly change. Okay, so the role of supply and demand in pricing is not to be set the price, but to act as a guide to setting price. Um, it is not always the case that increasing scarcity equals increasing value. So it is important to understand that there are two types of demand. So first, realize or observe demand. Okay, so the graph shows a hotel realized demand by day of week. So on the night when the demand was realized to capacity, this implies that the total demand was satisfied. Okay. So realize or observe demand is defined as the actual sales receipt. Okay. However, this does not show what element of demand was not satisfied and therefore was unsatisfied or prostated demand in that if the capacity is ex exceeded. So that is the second type of demand, unsatisfied or frustrated demand. Okay, so the following graph shows a hotel's realized and frustrated demand by day of week. So frustrated demand is defined as demand for products and services which cannot be met by the suppliers. So um, the green one in the graph, it shows the frustrated demand, okay? Um, that is the product and services nga wala na meet sa business, okay? 
So what are the causes of constrained demand? So the causes of constrained demand based on the graph presented is that demand can be constrained by the variety of causes. Um, the major causes would be the remaining capacity, length of stay restrictions, or the pricing does not meet the customer's requirements. So maugid na siya ang mga causes na na ang mga constrained demand. Okay, so this is the excess demand and then the excess capacity. Okay, another bonus question. Okay, how does a recession impact consumers' confidence when making a purchase decision? Okay. So A, it has no significant impact. It increased uh, co consumer confidence. Um, C, it decreased consumers' confidence. So if na a recession, so basically would decrease ang confidence sa consumer. Okay, letter C. Now let's proceed to segmenting the market. So this refers how and why hotels segment their consumer. Okay, so traditionally, hotel segment their guest um, based on the purpose of their stay. Okay, so be, um, first, business or corporate. Second is leisure. Third is government based on the government um, stay and contract. And lastly, tour and travel. So at a high level, these major segments will start with the primary categories of individual, group, and crew. So there are four ways in which we can segment the market. These are known as profilers and needs. So the marketers will profile the market market based on their ge geographic and demographic. Okay, so, and the needs based on their psychographic and behavioral. So in the hotel industry, um, access to the behavioral attributes tends to be easiest and therefore this is the one that is used the most to understand customers and how hotels can best service their needs so behavioral segments considers the why what when and how of the guest stay for example uh, why is the guest staying okay manage question uh, why what is the occasion um when when are they staying and how often does the guest stay so, ano kailangan magin sila segment? Ah, uh, dili ba di pwede nga dili na lang accept lang ka ng accept, okay? Ano man? Because um segmentation. So let's define first what is segment. So actually na di na discuss na niya last meeting. So segmentation involves subdividing market channels or customers into groups with different needs. So it is then possible to deliver a tailored proposition which meets which meets the this needs as closely as possible so when presented with the same marketing message product or price point each segment should react in a different manner so basically the aim of segmenting is to group together customers with similar attributes and buying behaviors so that they can be understood okay what are their needs and we, the the business will able to recognize and understand uh, where they gain value from okay so in hotel uh, understand their guests and then what are their expectations in the business and how they are going to operate effective and efficient in order to meet their guest need okay so here are some drivers behind accurate um, segmentation first targeted sales and marketing activities so here understanding the net profitability of each segment um, ensures that the focus of sales and marketing efforts will be on attracting the right business at the right time. Second driver is increased guest retention level. So if the sales and marketing activities are focused appropriately, um, this will help to give alignment between guest expect expectation and operational delivery that would increase the value proposition. So ultimately, this will help business retain the valuable, the valuable repeat business. Third, targeting pricing. So as each segment will respond to price proposition in a different way, um, accurate segmentation will assist in the pricing process. Okay. And then fourth, 
increased market share of the desired segment. So accurate market segmentation, um, it will allow hotel to focus on the growing desired uh, market segments. Okay, um, focus on secondary segments during need or distress periods and move away from the unprofitable or hard to reach segments. Okay, so the ultimate aim of accurate segmentation um, is to improve efficiencies that leads to enhancement of the profit opportunity. So what happens if segmentation is incorrect? So there are many implications of inaccurate segmentation, many of which are frequently overlooked within the hotel industry. So first, it includes inaccurate purchase forecasting. So when business do not know who is coming to the hotel, um, forecasting becomes more challenging. So an accurate forecast is one that is completed day by day, okay, by market segment. Okay, so understanding segment trends in terms of stay, patterns, and revenue implication is essential to compiling is essential to compiling an accurate forecast. So in addition, inaccurate segment forecasting will inevitably lead to increased operational charges. Okay, if the business fails to anticipate customer needs, because um if dili ni mo determine who are those people staying, possibly you will offer um kanang lahi ang expectations sa guests. So once the lahi ang expectations sa guests, of course, the guests will complain. So in order to address the complaints, of, of course, you have to offer something it, para maulian ang guests, di ba? So that would lead to uh, increased operational challenges. Second, an effective pricing strategy. So in accurate forecasting by uh, segment um, will lead to an effective pricing strategies that fail to take advantage of the full range of segment pricing potential. So segments may be overpriced or underpriced. So both having a significant impact on the revenue and operational efficiencies of the hotel. Third, incorrect sales and marketing activities. So acquiring new customers can be costly. Okay, so therefore, critical, critical, the sales and marketing team focus its effort on the segments that will best help the hotel achieve its long-term goals. So the activities of RM and sales must be aligned. Okay, so, <laughs> which does not meet or exceed the price or requirements as determined by the RM. And lastly, strategy impact. So here, the combination of points one, two, and three will lead to a long term and strategy impact if the organization is not clearly focused on the deliveries of the optimal segment mix. So here's the bonus question. So segmentation is important in hotels in order to first, best meet consumer needs, second, use resources efficiently and effectively, C, understand who other guests are and what they expect, D, all of the above. So the answer would be all of the above. Okay. Now let's proceed to pricing value and perception. So determining the optimal rate for a product can be challenging task. And there are many factors that must be considered must be considered okay so some of the primary factors are first consum cons customers willingness to pay okay so this is often referred to as price is elasticity or price sensitivity okay so the willingness to pay factor often leads to what is considered as pricing di differentiation or discrimination so this exists when the same product is offered to different segments of customers at different prices based on their willingness to pay or value. So the insensitive markets are those cost customers who do not react strongly to changes in price, while the sensitive segments will see significant demand changes as a result of price changes. Okay, so the second 
The second one, the second factor is the market-based pricing. Okay, so a market-based pricing strategy is one that evaluates the price points offered by similar products in the same marketplace. Um, it is important to ensure that only products that your customer would consider as either similar or substitutes are considered. And then your pricing is then set in relation to those products, taking into account any product or service variants. So for example, once you have completed your value matrix, you may set your price slightly lower than a competitor if they offer a superior product or location. Okay, so if you have higher quality product or services, then you may opt to set the price higher or match the pricing in times of weak demand to gain an increased market share. And then, third, profitability and cost. So it is important to ensure that when setting price, you understand both the operational and transactional costs associated with the sale. The operational costs are those associated with the operational servicing of that guest. And then the transactions costs are those um, associated with accepting that particular reservation. So when, when we say operational cost in hotel, this refers to the room cleaning and amenities. And then when we refer to transactional cost in hotel, this refers to the credit card fees and commissions. Okay, so understanding the net profitability of each transaction is important. So as it may influence your pricing and your optimal segment plan. The next is negotiated pricing. So offering a negotiated price is a way of asking for a volume commitment. Um, is a tactic that has been in use for quite some time. So in this arrangement, both par parties offer something in the negotiation process. Um, example, the hotel offers a rate that is lower than a publicly available one, and the client gives a commitment to giving a minimum number of room nights to the hotel. So that is an example of negotiating pricing. So the rate is offered can be fixed or it can be offered as a percentage of a best available rate. Okay, so when offering negotiated or discounted pricing, um, it is important to ensure that any transaction costs are kept to a minimum. Okay, so na na siya yung, um, standards, um, na na siya set ng mga minimum standards so that both of you can benefit on the, uh, on the price being negotiated. And then price fences or restrictions. Okay, so a coherent pricing stands in a strategic way to specified market segment. Um, price fences allow the seller to control who has visibility of and access to any discounts that are available. And this ensures that Customers who are not price sensitive do not receive an unnecessary discount when this happens. It is known as rate dilution. So your segment strategy should include details of the type of fences and restrictions that are appropriate to and will be accepted by this group of buyers. Example of uh, price fences could be controlling room type availability, those um, advanced purchase rate or kanang mga deposits or discounts or no cancellation permits or kanang mga uh, minimum stay required or those qualifying criteria like membership or kanang mga specific group. Okay, mao na siya. Okay, bonus question. If the market is operating at similar occupancies, then lowering your rate is the best way to increase revenue and profitability. True or false? So the answer is true. Okay, so true ang answer niya. Okay, so, so that ends with our discussion. So for summary, so in understanding the customer, RM should not just focus on the usual differentiation, but enhance based on common understanding of how one differentiates people by their interests, activities, opinions, uh, preferences and values and then um consumer can be of two type the personal consumer which 
um, can uh, make purchase decision based on their personal needs or personal use and organization um, consumer, which makes a purchase decision based on the use of the equipment, uh, by the use of the equipment and other supplies based on the organization. Okay, and then um, the economy and supply demand segmenting the market. So um, uh, consumers segments uh, market uh, segmenting the market uh, is very important so that um, people can uh, the business people can understand their consumers' needs and wants, and then pricing value and perception. Okay. Okay. So for your case study analysis. So what would you like to drink with that? Asked the counterperson to Tamara Hendricks. Tamara was in Metropolitan Airport. And because the time between her connecting flights was short, she had stopped in, uh, in at a busy deli outlet for a pre-wrapped sandwich that could be purchased and eaten quickly. So give me a small bottle of water, the 12 owns, not, not the 20, replied Tamara. This looks great and I'm starved. Thought Tamara happily, and she left the busy counter. As the newly appointed district manager for Copy Plus Business Centers, there was a lot of travel involved in her position, but she loved her job. How much was that? Asked Jerome Ode. As Tamara joined him at the stand-up counter to serve as the Delhi's sm small designated dining area. Jerome had been with Copy Plus for over 10 years and also held the district manager's title. Jerome, who was traveling with Tamara to a Copy Plus regional sales meeting, had also ordered a sandwich and a drink from the same vendor and was now start staring intently at the tray she was carrying. My sub? Asked Tamara. No, replied Jerome. The water. So 15 pesos, said Tamara. The same as your soda. That's crazy. There's a drinking fountain right over there, he said, pointing to a water fountain located between the entrance to the men's and ladies. Restrooms just across for the area in which they were standing. What would you ever pay good money for something you can get for free? So here's the question. So you have to answer this one. So what did Tamara buy for 15 pesos? At the time of purchase, purchase, sorry, do you believe she was pleased with her transaction? So answer would be 10 points. Okay, so do you think um, Jerome would be more likely to value and buy bottled water from this sandwich vendor if its price were reduced by 10%? If it was reduced by 50%, okay, so muna siya inyo hang, huna huna on. And then Jerome is 55 years old and Tamara is 25. Do you believe a person's chronological age or any other demographic characteristics can affect how a buyer views a seller's What are some specific examples from your own life experiences or those of your customers that support your position? Okay, mo na siya. So deadline for submission will be Wednesday, May 26, 2021. So no class for Wednesday. So, but... Um, no class for Wednesday, okay, mali ang date, okay, but you will have your module quiz, okay, 26 mana siya, okay, sorry kaayo for the error, okay, so reminding about your module quiz, so any question, okay, so please make sure to watch this video so that you will have your bonus points in your koan module quiz, okay, thank you everyone.